Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is a morning market prep video for November 19th, 2020. So yesterday, we get one of those nasty little whipsaw days. Those bulls really were doing everything they could think of to try and lift the market up. They really want to break out and catch that 30,000 level in the Dow, and I expect them to continue to attempt to do that. While at the same time, we continue to get this bearish news of shutdowns and problems um, within the market. So pretty interesting situation going on. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we saddle up, grab ourselves something to drink, and let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. This morning, we have just that palpable uncertainty. We saw those bulls really trying it. And really what's going on here, what I wrote in the morning blog this morning, is there is a news-driven tug of war between the bulls and the bears. The bulls trying to enforce the idea or encourage the idea that a recovery is underway with vaccines on coming and um, all that hopefulness that the market will recover. Um, we have, on the other hand, COVID numbers just running rampant. Um, uh, over 170,000 new infections yesterday, death toll topping 250,000. Um, an ugly, an ugly situation in the market. Not only that, we also have an IIF report that is very, very concerning that um, global debt has now reached, whoops, sorry, global debt has now reached um, record levels and is re reaching record levels with um, major markets um, around the world um, coming in on, on an average of over 400%, 430% debt to GDP. That is certainly concerning as we continue to spend to try and uh, defeat this virus. We continue this deficit spending, and I suspect that will only continue, um, adding to the future problems of the market. So where are we when we look at the technicals? Well, we have that uncertainty, and, and here's, here's what the challenge, I think, is for most traders. Um, we, we know we want the market to break out here. Um, we also have um, some price action here in the diamonds showing a little bit of price support right through here. The problem everyone has with this market right now, unless you're a very adept day trader, is the considerable risk to any downside um, support. If we buy up stocks here, we could have several hundred points move just to test these support levels. As we saw yesterday, a whipsaw that left us um, pretty darn bearish on the day, leaving behind that bearish engulfing candle. So that's the struggle that we have. If you are trading or if you're trying to trade at a at the same level you were, um, you know, a couple of months ago, you're finding you're likely finding that your um, trades or your accounts are being chopped up because of the danger of this. And remember, we don't have to take this danger. Um, if you find that your accounts are being beat up too much, it may be wise to just stand aside for a while and let this uncertainty kind of settle itself before we jump in. Now, technically speaking, we are still in uptrends in the market. Notice the Dow here, we are still in an uptrend. So I'm not sounding the, the any type of alarm that we should be all bearish. I understand the idea that we don't want to miss out on the recovery rally. But to do that, we have to take considerable risk to our short-term trades just simply because of the wide or the wild volatility that we see in those 300 plus um, uh, point intraday reversals or whipsaws and overnight gaps. So consider your risk carefully. And remember, we do have a holiday coming. So with a holiday coming, um, maybe we need to back off a little bit. Maybe we need to um, just protect our capital 
a little bit in this market. Now, let's take a look at, at what could happen. If the sellers, if the bears continue to push down, um, we certainly have that possibility that we could test support right here in this level on the chart. So kind of keep that in mind if those bears push back testing that level would not be out of the question. Unfortunately, the distance between here and here is substantial, and that's what creates all of these risks in the market. Now, if that doesn't hold, if we don't find support in there, then look for this next level down in here to maybe catch us in support in that chart. Here's the problem. If we drop into this big, massive gap in the Dow, um, that could be a real painful pullback for a lot of folks. So kind of keep that in mind and watch that closely. If we don't catch support in here, that possibility that we drop into that level and maybe even come all the way back down, whoops, to fill this overall gap. So watch that closely. And remember, we are a long ways away from our technical moving averages here. Our eight exponential has kept caught up, and that is a good sign as long as we continue to hold above that eight exponential. We call that the T line or the trigger line um, in hit run candlesticks and right way options. But if we can hold, hold that T line, um, that can be a good sign. And you can see we're trying to rally off of overnight lows in the futures. Those bulls are really trying to fight back. And I suspect institutions are just really gonna work hard. They want to see that 30,000 level in the market. So uh, kind of keep that in mind. They're gonna battle these bears pretty hard, but as news continues to roll out about shutdowns and further impacts to uh, the market, that will weigh heavily on investors' minds. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at um, the SPY, SPY. Little bit better situation technically here in the chart because we don't have that big gap underneath uh, the price action. Notice we're trying to catch and hold some support um, through this level, or if we pull back, we sh should try and catch and hold some support through that level. And once again, notice that that eight exponential moving average has rallied up, and we're uh, trying to hold that at the moment in this morning's market. Um, but keep in mind that 50 day moving average is still a long ways away. And I wouldn't want to rule out the possibility that we could still test that in some kind of a pullback. I also wouldn't want to rule out the possibility that we just enter a choppy sideways move. Okay, let's keep in mind that what we've got going on here, this is a technically a lower high. Um, in that price action on the SPY. So we're starting to form this uh, bit of a wedge pattern in here. And we could just bounce around in here for a while in choppy price action as we wait for that 50 day moving average to catch up. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ uh, continues to show some concerns, <coughs> excuse me, some concerns here. If I draw a trend line across this, notice that we have a downtrend underway um, in the chart. We're, we're continuing to struggle with this resistance level, unable to break back up through right in here. We tried um, and we tried again yesterday, but just couldn't get it done and then saw those sellers coming in. However, we also have this, these higher lows in here creating a very sizable um, symmetrical triangle wedge pattern in here. Um, we're not nearly as in bad a technical position um, as the SPY and the, and the diamonds because we're, our 50 day moving average is much closer, closer. However, but with these lower highs, there is some concern here and that would raise that, that um, possibility that we will test this lower side, maybe test that 50 and even come back down into that symmetrical triangle to hold that support level. So watch that close. And IWM has really held up quite strong. IWM, um, I said this um, several days ago, that IWM may become our market leader. And right now it's showing us some um, um, some impressive strength. Notice that we've broken through resistance highs here in the chart to all time highs. And although we have a bearish engulfing candle here, we have a fairly decent level of price support um, looking at that price action back over here. And this is one of the markets that actually broke through that big Monday gap 
and we're holding in here. So um, IWM holding up pretty well and technically one of the better patterns. Although we have our 50 day moving average a long ways away, it's gonna take considerable time for that to catch up. And perhaps what we do here in the market is we just rest up here. We just consolidate and rest up here while we wait for those technical patterns to catch up. Let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX, boy, you know, just when you think <laughs> it's safe to get back in the water. Um, then we get news of New York shutting down schools and um, concern raising on the coronavirus. And we spike up here again. So we did for a period of time yesterday break down through that 500 day moving average here on the VIX. But a little bit of fear came back in on that news and that intraday reversal or what I call a whipsaw. We were trying to move up and then we completely whipped it to the downside. And we still have this um, considerable level of price support here in this chart that we'll want to consider. I didn't really see a massive wave of fear coming in. It was um, certainly a, um, a substantial downside move, but it wasn't really a panic move. And what I wanna watch here is this downside trend in the VIX. If we do catch some fear and rally up, let's look for that 50 day moving average or this area up in here to maybe hold us um, I, I don't think we're going to have real panic until we break that downtrend, hold it as support, and then start to spike. And is that possible? Certainly it is. But right now, I'm not seeing that in the chart. We're still trying to hang on to um, hopefulness of recovery. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now, T2122 improved slightly yesterday, but not nearly enough to get us out of this bearish reversal zone. And right now we're seeing futures trying to push back up into positive. They're still just slightly negative, but they're trying to push back up into positive as if nothing is happening, there's no problems, nothing going on. But we do have this concern up here and we've seen this many, many times. We get elevated up here and we see kind of a rest or pullback in the market. Now, I'm not suggesting that we have to just collapse, okay? I'm, I'm not saying that. We could get a longer term consolidation um, at these levels and still see this T2122 pullback. So watch that carefully and closely and just realize we are still very elevated here and there is significant danger to support levels in the charts. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. And our economic calendar, we have a busy morning here that could really change a lot as this news comes out. We have jobless claims this morning. And right now, the jobless claims consensus is looking for a bit of an improvement in that jobless claims. With COVID numbers the way they are, that might be um, a little bit, uh, well, uh, there's a question mark over that. Um, uh, uh, report right now. Will they come in strong or could we end up getting a surprise increase or maybe even a surprise decrease in that number? So keep in mind, even though we're trying to uh, put on a brave face this morning and push back up, these numbers could have a major effect on the day, how they come in. So watch that jobless claims. Philly Fed is looking for some um, a bit of improvement here, um, but watch that close. And then existing home sales are looking for a bit of a reduction in what we have seen um, um, lately, just, uh, just a little bit of a pullback in those existing home sales. So watch that closely. Um, we also have um, Fed speakers continuing to go on in a natural gas report and a Fed balance sheet which no one cares about because no one cares about debt anymore. We just keep spending and keep the market up. So watch, uh, watch these numbers closely this morning. Then if we take a look at our earnings calendar, we got about 50 companies reporting earnings and there are some notables, whoops, there are some notables to be made aware of. And if you wanna catch the full list of notables, uh, make sure you click that link right below the title of the video and um, go back to the blog and you can see uh, the full notables uh, for the day. Some of the, I think maybe the, the ones that will be most impressive today um, into it, 
um, will be important today. Uh, that will come in after the bell, I believe. Keep a close eye on that later on today. One of our bigger technicals that we'll be reporting today. We'll hear from Macy's today. I kind of doubt this will be a major market moving event on Macy's with the trouble that they have been having in this ugly, ugly long-term downtrend. But it is worth um, uh, keeping an eye on. Um, we'll also hear from Post, a big old defensive uh, packaged foods or cereal company and um, they do a lot more than that nowadays but as you can see um, post is now pulling back this morning in the pre-market um, must have disappointed on those reports um, Ross stores will be reporting today might want to keep an eye on that and last one I'm going to cover this morning is W day W day will be reporting today this could be um, you know, uh, certainly this has done very, very well um, during COVID. So we'll want to watch this. Here's another one of those symmetrical triangles and one of those challenges here in the chart where this could really go either direction. So watch that close. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, everyone, if you guys can do me a favor, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you find these videos to be helpful in how you plan your day, kind of removing that hype and, and, and that nervous energy in the morning by just taking a close look at the charts, um, if you could click that thumbs up button and also leave a brief comment, it helps us to continue to grow. And I truly, truly appreciate it uh, for those who take the time to do that. Also, please feel free to share these videos on any of your social platforms. And thank you to everyone who does that. Um, I never would have guessed. I'm so humbled with the growth of this channel and never would have guessed there would have been this many people that would have been interested in this kind of content. So thank you uh, very, very much, um, everyone. I truly, truly appreciate it. Appreciate it. Now, one of the things I've mentioned here in the last few days is um, gold and silver. And gold and silver, kind of an interesting situation here where we're seeing treasury yields fall. Um, we're seeing um, our currency falling, but we're also continuing to see um, trouble in these gold and silver stocks. Um, be really, really careful here. Um, common sense would tell you as we continue to print and the debt going through the roof, the gold and silver could be a pretty good trade. But right now it is not there. As a matter of fact, this is a potential um, uh, failure setting up here to lose some support in um, this chart on uh, gold. So gold may actually turn into a short trade, which is rather surprising. Um, right now. If we take a look at silver, now silver had a little bit of a um, rally yesterday and then as we got the that news um, of New York and uh, shutdowns and things like that, gold or silver also pulled back. Now we still have a bit of an upside move here going on so we have a little bit more of that symmetrical triangle but I still have that, that kind of concern in here that this could actually move down with the market um, even though our currency continues to devalue um, and treasury yields continue to fall. So watch that carefully, kind of an interesting situation going on. However, if you take a look at some of the other metals out there, and I mentioned uh, some of these yesterday, Alcoa, um, Alcoa um, maintained itself very, very strong yesterday. Um, I do expect some kind of a rest or pullback in this trade. You can see a pullback into this support would not be all that big of a surprise. I wouldn't want to chase this, but these metals are staying very, very strong. Um, also take a look at um, a copper. Copper continuing to hold up quite well and actually SCCO is setting up a possible upside move as long as we can hold on to trend here and this price support. Keep a close eye on that. And then um, if you take a look at whoops, um, Cleveland Cliffs um, Steel holding up quite well, holding into these bullish trends, looking strong, holding support levels. Let's keep an eye on that if some of these steel stocks, uh, CLF and X, uh, breaking through resistance here, if those can continue to hold up. Now these would be 
those plays that would say um, we're looking forward to that recovery and infrastructure improvements in the market. So keep a close eye on those holding up quite well. Other places that you might want to look, take a look at FedEx. FedEx moving back up, breaking its downtrend here, and now a little tiny rest or pullback sets up that opportunity for more upside move. Um, with so many people staying home and the holidays approaching, uh, this might be the chart that could really push on higher here. Um, watch that closely. And then, of course, retail stocks um, that have been holding up quite well. Um, WMT got a little bit of pullback here from this resistance high. I continue to expect this to pull back. Uh, this is a stock that I hold. I've held for a long time, but I don't see anything uh, terribly bearish here. The earnings were very good. 79% increase in online sales. So watch this for that next opportunity to enter a trade. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great profits in your trading. Please, folks, be very safe out there. Be very safe out there. This COVID stuff is, is nothing to mess with. Um, I want to see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Y'all take care. Have a good one. And have a great day of trading.